crewmate again. I just want to be imposter one time. And I just got imposter <laughs> again. I wish I could stop playing imposter. Beepity boobity. Hey, 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 settle down, kids. I know a game where everyone can be the imposter and simultaneously not. It's called The Predator. What? The game where everyone can be a predator. No, that, that, no. Doesn't no, look no, right no that's not think... good at all. That's not good. I don't, good. I don't should... think that's good. Love. Betrayal, drama, this game has it all. It's a round-based 1v8 map where each person takes turn being the Predator, a powerful hero capable of using broken-ass spells that only 12-year-old you could dream of downloading and using off of Hive Workshop. The rest of the survivors, puny, weak men of God, will have to work together to blink, fireball, pledge their allegiance to the Green Party in order to survive the Predator's onslaught. Contrary to what you might expect, this is not a team game. Only one person can bring home the bacon. So watch your fellow man before you find yourself taking fiery back shots. <laughs> I've been wanting to do a video on this game for so long because I just love how unique this custom map is. It was made in 2009 and in 15 long years, I still have never seen another game quite like this. So what makes it so special? First of all, asymmetrical games are generally hard to find. Think about the most popular asymmetrical games out there. Dead by Daylight. Among Us! And yeah, that's pretty much it, right? You know, that's all I can think of. And the reason why I think they're quite rare is because generally they present an inherent dilemma in their design. Because the teams are uneven, you get one of two situations. One, nobody wants to be on the team with less people because, you know, who wants to get dicked down by a ton of peeps? Or two, you want to be the killer, but you can't because there's only one fucking slot. So, you know, probably somebody's unhappy at the end of the day. But my dear, this game solves that because we love a little communism around here because it's not just you that's playing the killer, everybody's playing the killer, all right? And if you hate being the killer, that's fine. You only get to spend a few minutes being the killer, uh, you know, being shoved in the locker. It's fine. Everybody has to do their time. And if you love being the killer, well, you can always be the killer in every single lobby, guaranteed. Now, it sucks that you can't always be the killer, but hey, you know, communism. We all gotta share a little, we all gotta, you know, whatever, you know, fucking, you gotta share the toys, Timmy. Okay, don't be a fucking prick, Timmy, okay, I'm gonna fucking kill you. So yeah, not only is it unique in its asymmetricness, but it's also unique in how it solves the problem of its asymmetric design. Second of all, the limited supply of winners, aka one, automatically adds another layer of social gameplay, despite the fact that the core gameplay is team-based. Naturally, with only one winner, your fellow man may be tempted to act like a certain crab in a bucket, latching onto whoever's ahead's fat ass to make sure that they don't succeed. Now, this is interesting because as a survivor, you constantly have to evaluate what's best based on the situation, creating an ever-changing, fluid gameplay. You may want to keep that survivor alive because they have less points than you and can act as a useful meat shield. You may also want to inconspicuously fat finger and not heal the survivor next to you who has more points than you. Oops, my finger slipped, I hit the fireball button, and now I am giving you a fiery back shot. So I think that it's really cool that you're all placed on the same team against the Predator, despite the fact that only one of you is gonna win, causing some, you know, conflict of interest, but if you let the Predator win and everybody dies, then it's not good for everybody, so it's kind of this tug of war of interest, you know? Finally, this game has a lot of random elements which makes every round feel fresh and exciting to adapt to. Like bro, you know why this fucking bald guy can play this game for 8 years every day straight and not get sick of it? It's called fucking randomness baby, RNGesus. Let's list out the possible random elements in the game. Number 1. You get a random ability each round as a survivor. Some abilities include you getting into the goddamn tree Shinji, or having a dragon pick you up, or the predator, to swapping places, to having a beefed up war stop, so on and so on. There is also a referee who wanders around the map, randomly doing things. Despite his name, he is not actually a referee, just like the referee who gave me a red card for punching that kid in the face in soccer. What the fuck are you doing? He deserved it. Some of the things he can do includes opening up a portal, sending you to a babe town. These babes can then get attracted to you and have a random chance of dropping a random item like shoes, you filthy, barefoot, naked bitch. 
I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes you will also cast Stampede for no fucking reason or get on a dragon and one shot you, which can also happen to the brother for some funny epic moments. Oh, lols. XD. Am I fucking in the wrong generation? There are also different areas in the map which are not random, but they do provide an exciting variety of gameplay. For example, at the top of the map, you have a fountain in which you stand under it and it gives you mana, which is very useful for not only the survivors, but also the predator. And at the bottom right, we have a bunch of rocks which may look like ordinary rocks but if you destroy them the fucking motherfucking rock spawns some big rock golems hard rock solid golems will come and fuck your dumb bitch ass. Maybe, am I swearing too much? So that can be cool as a Hail Mary situation in which you need to escape from the survivor, but you don't really have any abilities, so you kind of bank on the rock, you know, spawning and just fucking over the predator, giving you some time to escape. And finally, there are nine or 10 different predators to play, all randomized, if you pick cycled random, which you should, because ARAM is the best mode. I love RNGs, free will is an illusion. I want my games to reflect that, but no, seriously, it's way funner if the heroes are random and they all have super unique abilities that are just all fun to use. I'll just quickly go over the Predator and some of their fun abilities because I think they're fun to talk about. We got the Berserker and his signature move is to basically do this beefed up blade storm where he picks you up and he just fucking blends you and there's nothing you can do about it. Super fun! We also got the Brawler who has the best ability in the game. Alcoholism. Alcoholism. Al alco alcoholism? Alcoholism? How do you fucking say this word, bro? He also has a 500 AoE insta-kill storm bolt, which is very cool in my opinion. We also got Tinker. Like Tinker, he can fire undodgeable rockets, except his is channeling. He can also create explosions the size of my butthole. And he can also build towers. Now you may think, isn't this OP? No, this is actually beautiful, genius game design because in order to build a tower, he has to send over these three little miny, tiny robots to build the tower, okay? Now the thing is, if they're uninterrupted, they finish building the tower, but you can interrupt it by destroying at least one of them with the fireball. So this kind of creates an interesting tug of war situation where, you know, the survivors don't necessarily want to work together, but they have to in order to defeat a greater threat, AKA being tower rushed. We got the Lich, who was already so busted in vanilla Warcraft 3, the only way they could think of making him more busted was by giving him flight. Right away. That's cool. Got the demon. Now, I forgot to talk about the pit, which is something that you can blast the predator in in order to kill them instantly, which is kind of a high risk, high reward move because usually it sacrifices your blink in order to do so. And then if you miss, then you don't have any movement and you're almost guaranteed to die to the predator. But this guy kind of circumvents the rule by being invincible to the pit because he's literally the fucking pit lord. Oh my God, that's a bad thing. Okay, I'll shut the fuck up, I'm sorry. The trade off is that he takes damage at the fountain, which is kind of ass because it's usually an important source of mana for most predators and it's kind of where the survivors are chilling. So you want to kind of get them out. So yeah, anyways, he kind of sucks, but I don't know, he's still cool. Got the vampire. So, you know, this guy's origin story is one day grubby Max carry and swarm so hard that he ended up dashing with it and he also instantly kills people, so that's pretty fucking cool. He can also summon dudes, which are ranged, which is fucking OP, honestly, which is crazy. Yeah. We also got the Gorgon, which I think is also a pretty cool design. She can, you know, channel this whirlpool and you get fucking sucked in and you'll fucking die. She can also, you know, turn into stone as Gorgons do. Um, and she's ranged, which is fucking OP as fuck, because all you do is just fucking auto attack people with your goddamn OP ass ranged auto attack. Can you tell that I hate ranged champions? I'm gonna fucking kill every single Aphelios. We also got a new Brack from the campaign, uh, which is pretty cool, because this guy also thought that having a point and click line stun wasn't enough, so bro decided to come finish the job by impaling your ass. He can also summon bugs to give you malaria, which is obviously quite a devastating move. It was a devastating move for an entire continent, so, you know, you can guess the power level of that. He also got Rexar, which is probably one of the worst heroes in the game, but he could ride his fucking bear, which is pretty cool. He can also throw his bear, which, you know, bonus points. He's kind of the best predator in my heart, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, I love this game, man. I've played it so many times. I really encourage you to go and give it a shot. I don't know if anyone's hosting lobbies, but you know, try and get some friends if you have any loser. Sorry, that was uncalled for. Hey, if you liked this video, don't subscribe, actually. I'm not one of those scumbag YouTubers telling you to subscribe and like, okay? I'm not ordinary. I'm different. I'm built different. Okay, I'll shut the fuck up now. What I really wanted to say is if you like this video and there's any other amazing custom maps that you remember from your childhood that you want me to talk about, send me a fucking message or comment. That's probably easier and less personally intrusive. I am also planning on streaming on Twitch. So if you want more of this action, if you want more of this action, you wanna play some custom maps together, you wanna hang out, you wanna chill, come stop by, it's fucking chill. 
I don't know. It's only me there. I wouldn't know. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just positing that it is chill. You don't have to come. Why am I saying this? I don't really have a schedule because my life is a fucking mess. Uh, but yeah, anyways, catch you later.